Yeah, right. We will now pull into that. You you got your bit of, you got your microphone triple M bloody microphone technique yeah. down pat. Yeah. Do, I'm um, gonna be here. Or do you want me to Andy, do you want to your voice on that? Maybe a little bit closer. Yeah. Um, oh, we can set up one of the other. Ones. Oh, yeah, that works. That and is Leo Rauchberger from my DNA futuristic business. One that I don't understand. I'm about to. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got the, I got the camera rolling. Uh, that's just Facebook Live. There you go. Um, so, from a microphone point of view, yeah, um, I wouldn't lean back. We, it's it's a bit weird this studio because it kind of forces us to get a little bit comfortable with each other. Um, if you see me give you that one, it just means kind of. I, I think it's on the. I think is it on the side? Yes. Or? Yeah. So it's probably. Oh, the, oh, the condenser on the side. Yeah. Also How's that? That's fine. Yeah. If you just give us a quick one, two. One, two. One, two. That's fine. I've got a very loud. You got a great voice. No one's ever told me I'm too quiet. <laughs> ever. No doubt. <laughs> Rouchburger, hey? Yes. Not Rauchburger. Well, I've had everything. <laughs> worse. I get all nicknames. <laughs> Beef burger. I uh, love it. How are you going, Andy? In good shape? Yeah, we're right to go. Leor, Dr. Leor. Well, yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, given your love of technology, what gadget has had the biggest impact on your life? Well, there aren't many gadgets I don't have at home. You name it, I buy it from Amazon or Google. I try them all. What do I like? I'm very big into work-life balance, particularly family business balance. So I like getting gadgets where it can sort of help with my family and get them excited about bits and pieces. So I have a little toy I bought a few years ago, and the kids love it. I've got three youngish kids. It's actually a Wi-Fi light globe. So I've got this lamp in our kitchen living area, and it's a colour changing lamp and it's connected to the internet. You took the, took the old fashioned lamp out, put the new one in. It's called LifeX. And what I do, you can, from the car, you can set all these rules when you're away from the home, right? So I've geofenced my house. So the, the lamp knows if I'm within two kilometres of my house on the way home every night, it starts flashing various colours and the kids start dancing around. Oh, Daddy's man. coming home, Daddy's coming home. You know, it's not quite changed my life, but they love it, and, it, and I know as I'm in that geofencing, I get a little beep, and I know they're getting excited, and I just love that gadget. I love that too. In yeah. fact, I, my, my son has got that. I didn't know I could do that. He's got one that has every hue of the rainbow. Is that the one? It is. You get it at the is. Apple Store, I think. Yeah, and my uh, kids give it, and they get it, and they play with my phone, and you can, you can pick from the 64,000 colours. Right. And, you know, they, they're learning at school about emotional intelligence, so they know if they're red in the day, that they're, you know, they're in lot low energy and energised, you know, there's all these colour things, and the, the colours tell them how they're Mate, feeling. I, I love the fact that of all the gadgets that you have, which clearly you have a lot, a lot. You've chosen that one. Good well, on you. Yes. Eh? Yeah. Work-life balance. Yes. All over it that. Just you know, it's important. Yeah. What time do you get to work in the morning? Look, I, I do an early gym session at five five thirty a.m. every morning. Oh, tough guy. Six mornings a week. Just a group fitness thing. Yeah, There's yeah. about twenty of us, yeah. which I love. So I start early. Yeah, I go hard during the day. So I probably get home around six thirty. Yeah. But I'm really good at, at switching off. Right. I'm unbelievable at it. Yeah. I can walk through that door, and no matter how stressful. And how hard my day is, I can just flick a switch and I can forget my whole day and I'm just a different Good person. On. Not easy to do. I went away with a mate on the weekend. He's checking his emails all the time. Yeah. Works for a publicly listed company. He's like, mate, it's not even your company. <laughs> Get off it. Yes, exactly. Be with me. You need to be able to... Yes, it's important. N not easy in today's day and age, no, but not, uh, no. important nonetheless. We're going to go all around the place here already. I know it because we're here to talk about my DNA and how you market a business that nobody really understands or thinks they need. We will get to that. But yes. um, doctor by trade, yes. uh, six years of medicine. I yes. uh, want to talk about that too. But you uh, you had a segment on Triple M Radio around technology. So I'm actually interested in how that came how about. How that came about. Oh, that was so random. The how, There was a guy at The Age or The Herald Sun, I don't, I don't even remember. A newspaper. One of the papers. And he had like a little tech column. And every week before they first launched the iPad in Australia... He was writing a piece every day leading up to the... It was a massive hysteria around Apple, the very first iPad, oh, wasn't many it? years ago. Yeah, yeah. So he was struggling for content, so he rang me because I had this integration business, which you talked about earlier, called Urban Intelligence. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, how is iPads going to help change home technology and home automation? So I wrote a little bit of a spiel for him. He published it. And then Triple M's the executive producer on The Breakfast Show rang him. Jay Mule. Jay rang him and said, can you come, rang this guy, I don't even remember this, this journo's name, he said, can you come in and talk about the iPad? And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm really not well, I'm on leave, but I just spoke to this funny chap, Lior, 
who he didn't know we were complete strangers. Why don't you give Leora a call? And he can come in the studio and talk about this. I got this random call from Jay, went into the studio, never ever sat in a radio studio ever. Right. And, he's, and I was a bit nervous, actually, back then. It was my first that. foray. And he said, we were talking about the iPad, and, you know, it you know, was uh, Luke Darcy was there, and yeah, Eddie, yeah. and, and then Mix joined the team. And we just hit it off. We had good chemistry. And, and they, they, they came. I went in for every week for a few years, a little tech what segment. What a great story. Yeah, and I, yeah, I mean, it was... So, so interesting enough, because back then, and you still do, you have a, brand, you have a business called Urban Intelligence, which yeah. decks out offices and homes yeah. with technology. Um, and that's pre being a doctor. Let's just, I, I don't want to do a timeline thing, but it is interesting. You, you did medicine. Yes. You never practiced medicine. I did. I practiced you... for four years. Mate, how, you were like 86 no, or something. No, I'm not. I just went, I, I graduated. I was 23 when I became a doctor. So I, wow. I, I started, you know, I finished quickly. At six years, I didn't have any breaks. Yeah, yeah. And I jumped when I was an intern at the Alfred. So I worked at the Alfred Hospital. Okay. For four years. So you practice medicine. Yes. Mum and dad are proud. Proud. Oh, they're telling yeah. the rallies. Good Jewish doctor. Good Jewish doctor. <laughs> you know, the hey. old adage, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could have done the accent there. You know, I know, I you know. know. Um, <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, at yeah. the age of 27, yes. you've gone, you know what? Entrepreneurism for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Well, look... I, I was I was working night shifts as an intern at the Alfred, like long nights, you know, and it, it could be quiet at times. And I was sort of reflecting. I'm not sure it sort of happened slowly over that year that I didn't know much about anything except you know a few Welcome subjects <laughs> that I've been learning my whole life, you know. And there wasn't such choice of subjects back in those days. You know, I was a science, chemistry, physics, and I went into medicine, biology, and anatomy. And I thought. I don't know squat about well, anything else in life. General practitioner, mate. That's what you do. I didn't know anything about economics or business, or and I just had this, you know, this thirst for knowledge. I started reading every business book I could get my hands on. I enrolled into this Masters of Entrepreneurship at Swinburne University, just part time yeah. after hours. And I thought, gee, I love this big, great world of business. And oh. I met a few entrepreneurial people, and we started. We taught ourselves how to do a bit of coding, and I just, just. I'm like a sponge, and I just realized there was this whole world open out there that wasn't just medicine and health, and I just loved it. And, and then a few opportunities came my way, and I sort of stood over the cliff for a while, because it's a big thing to jump off that medicine cliff. It'd been, it'd been like yes. nine years of doing medicine. Well, a lot of ego attached to it too, I'd imagine, yeah, and yeah. all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, and look, there Time are, invested. There is a lot of time investors, and, but I, I'm often asked, because I haven't done any clinical medicine really for 15 years, any, oh. and you know, people ask me, well, those 10 years of your life, wasn't that a waste? You know, I get that a lot. Yeah, And I think, couldn't be further from the truth. I, you know, what you learn in those 10 years about communicating with people, giving you a perspective on what's really important in life, those skills are invaluable. And I made lifelong friends and hmm. I, would, I would do it all again. Do it all again. Absolutely. Loved Goodness it. Me. Loved hey, it. listen, my right knee's a bit crook. No, here we go. I'm <laughs> so rusty. Good too. luck with that. Dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> so that's a great story. So all of a sudden... Um, you you left medicine. Uh, was urban intelligence your first play, or were you just like I've got all these ideas? No, well, I did a little I did a little software programming on Palm Pilots. You remember those Palm Pilots with the stylus? <laughs> we started writing some software on those. On they were the first sort of Love. personal digital assistants yeah. called PDAs back in they the were. day. <laughs> and uh, that was a little foray. We, and I did that with a doctor friend of mine that we were working nights at the Alpha together. We did it on the side. We had no idea about business. We didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. We were like. You know, in the years in a headlight, it was just, and so that was a bit of fun. And we had a few customers, and 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 Hugo, my you know, old intern friend, he was so entrepreneurial. And he just kept twisting my arm. He just, as soon as we had a hint of a customer, he was out of there. He goes, oh, I'm going to run this software, medical software business. It was called MedSeed back yeah. then. This is sort of the Make late it nineties. It'll yeah. take off. Yeah, no, we had, we did no idea what we were doing. And then I actually rolled in that Swinburne course, and actually we wrote a marketing plan on a company that we just a fictitious thing called IntelliHomes back then wow. and that evolved into urban intelligence we actually wrote a marketing plan on home automation home technology and back then it was really early adopter really stuff early. really early and we I mean, thought what did you do it was a remote control on your garage door it was it? it was yes it was yeah and it was sort of always perceived for not not really affordable and it was just rich and famous sort of movie sort of stuff you know jetsons and so we wrote a marketing plan and a few people got together and we actually started that business, Urban Intelligence, back in uh, March of '03. I always get fascinated. Uh, did, you, did you have a bit of dough to back yourself here? No, 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 no. No, you had no Zero. family. You had. You, I mean, you, you were free, right? Yeah, because when you, you work as an intern in the hospitals, you know, there's all glamorous yeah. here, doctor. Yeah, but yeah. those young doctors, they work long hours and get paid like shit. Yeah, 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 nothing, yeah totally. you know? 
So no, we we, we had I think we we between, there was three of us and we cobbled together. You know, it was less than ten thousand dollars. It might have been five. We had a couple of grand each. Chucked that in. Had a crack working out of the garage. Yeah, literally trying to get customers and piggybacked on our summer relationships and yeah it was interesting you have a, clearly a habit of identifying businesses and markets with that people don't think they need or don't understand because back then urban intelligence the idea of wiring people's homes up to be automated although yeah. i mean I, I think we saw that on the jetsons right uh, it was like <laughs> yes you know the, clearly you see something that others don't yeah well it was we were really early and it was hard we just you know we were out there just we spoke to a lot of architects who were often the gatekeepers when people were doing new homes. So we started in residential land and then we moved to commercial land, but that was quite a bit later. So we're only home automation mm -hmm. in our first five years. It was it was tough. It was tough. Yeah, you, yeah. So it it's, take, it's, it's taken off? You've been able to kind of step back from the business and go, okay, what's the next big thing? I'm yeah. guessing this is the path. A, yes, yeah? exactly. Yeah. Was my DNA the next big thing, or was there is there a, is there a litter of no, no, ideas behind? No, it? that's the next big one that I've been working on. Absolutely. So what happened? It's really interesting, actually. I've got an old mate of mine who I used to play indoor cricket with, and he knew I loved. Even though I hadn't worked as a doctor for some years, he knew I loved business. He loved technology, and his dad is a, a well-respected international professor of genetics. Hmm. Now, I remember learning back in the medical school days a little bit about DNA, but it was very superficial. It, it really wasn't much about genetics and DNA at all. And But he had this one-page business plan that his dad had written about what he wants to do with genetics and what's coming in the world, like the new frontier, and it just resonated with me. I thought, that's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he had no commercial experience, no business experience. He was just a brilliant scientist, so to speak, and under, you know, clinical geneticist. He was doing a lot of genetic counselling for children with... You know, rare genetic diseases mm -hmm. back then. And I said to Alan, who's my old indoor cricket mate, I said, you've got to leave your plush job. And he was looking for a bit of money to back them, into some seed capital, quite a nominal amount. So I said... How much? He was looking at 50K. Right. 50K. I mean, it's all relative, sure, isn't it? But sure, yeah, it's sure. nothing crazy. And I said, if you quit your job, because your dad can't run this thing, you, you become the general manager, I'll come and provide phone support. We have a monthly board meeting, because I was still working on Urban Matters, yeah? yeah? yeah, yeah. That was five or six years ago. Yep. And he did it, good on him. He jumped, I invested, got involved, became a director, and I've not been active until only really the last 15 months. What, what was the idea that he jumped and you grabbed hold of? What, what was it actually besides this, this genius fellow's identified? Yeah. Well, they wanted to... I know, don't even know what the term yeah. is. <laughs> yes. No, look, he saw that you know, as, as a society, we started to decode our DNA. It really is the blueprint that makes all of us unique. And he saw that in the future, as more and more of DNA is studied and researched around the world, there's going to be a need for a company or a service or a provider to analyze it and give people a report and sort of de-technicalize it and make it simple so people can understand what it means for their lives. Right. So it's really like we really become an expert. We're really an interpretation engine because we don't own the DNA. It's everyone's DNA. And even we don't actually do any genetic research. There are researchers around the world every day putting out some research to say, this DNA does this, this DNA, but it's quite complicated. And all we're doing is deciphering it all for people and filtering it and giving them a simple report. See, I love businesses that do this, where there is something complicated and someone has to put their hand up and say, I I'm going to take the complication out of it, dumb it down, yes, package it up so that it's viable mm. and put it to market. That's right? all we're doing. That's all you're doing. But it's very complicated. So we thought, we we're a bit naive, we thought dumbing it, it's down. It's like Apple. I, sorry, yeah. I have to... I, just to draw it a parallel, like I look at I look at my MacBook and I go, the interface is so beautifully intuitive. Mm. Hello to all you PC users, <laughs> um, but it's so beautifully intuitive. But I know behind on the motherboard or whatever's going on there, I don't know what's behind there. But it must be working at a million miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. All we see is this drag and drop functionality that yeah. allows us to do what we want to do. That's what you've done with well, my DNA. That's what we're doing. That's what we're having a crack at. Yeah, right. and we are really. It's you know we were. We were a bit ambitious or ignorant about how easy it would be to dumb things down because it sounds simple, but the genetic, our genetics and our genes are so complicated and there's so many, inter I mean, there's three billion letters that make up every cell in your body. Three billion letters. Three billion, we, every cell. Every single cell has three billion letters. Yeah, it's quite extraordinary. Yeah, and we're, as a society, it's just trying to decode it all and work it all out and people are starting to learn. And again, it's a bit like urban. People don't know what their DNA means for them. They just think it's just something to catch murderers or maybe find out who my daddy <laughs> is, yeah? And But it's so much more, and it's only the tip of the iceberg, and that's it's so exciting, the conversations we're having with people to saying, 
DNA will tell you about what diet you should be on, what medications you should take, what gym you should go to, in the future what sunscreen you should buy in the supermarket. It's just mind-boggling. It's going to explain everything. Everything. And everything. Do you feel as a, a, a business owner that is at the head of this curve that maybe what the advice that you're offering now may actually not be right? Uh, you, you know no, what I mean? It, like, no, it's no. like we, know, we must know so little yes. about this whole DNA industry, if I can call it that, yeah. that... You're just having a crack in the early days, and we are, we are, and we part of the journey with people. It's not it's, again; it's not just a one-off interaction with people. It's going to be a lifelong journey. We want to be the trusted provider to say we'll hold your DNA with your blessing, mm -hmm. and we'll update you as more information comes to light because it's such a fluid area. So we probably, as you know, all of humankind probably only understands probably of the twenty-five thousand genes that we've all got, the same genes that we just expressed differently. We probably understand what 300 of them mean. Wow. So when I say tip of the iceberg, I mean really the tip of the iceberg. The upside of your business is rather large if you get it Hopefully, right. Hopefully. So, yeah. so Lior, you've taken this crazily complicated concept and packaged it up. Explain to us what, what is the business? What am I, if I go to mydna.life. Yes, it is, yes. I have to talk about that. That's the first dot life I've had on the yeah, show. I know, we, we, uh, we couldn't get the dot com. You, you funky <laughs> doctors, you. <laughs> um, uh, if, if I, what are you offering me? What do I go and buy from you right now? So we started, we've got only two products at the moment, but I think when we're talking this time next year, we might have 20. I know we'll have 20. That's because how, how fluid it is. We started with a medication report, a genetic personalized medication report. So the problem, and I know medications, because I used to be a doctor and I can still write prescriptions, believe it or not, and uh, I should have mentioned that to you, if you're yeah, but there's a lot of trial and error that goes on with medications. In fact, most of our lives, many decisions in our lives are based on trial and error. When you go and see your doctor and he prescribes a particular drug for you, let me, let's pick a common condition like depression, which is very common. There's about seven antidepressants that your doctor could give you. Why he or she picks A or B and why he or she starts you on 10 milligrams that's just his starting point. It's guesswork. It's trial and error. Just throwing a coin in the air. Put ish, you on. Ish. I'll put you on ten milligrams. Tim, come and see me in a couple of weeks. If you have. And what happens? Really. By that time, you put on ten kilograms. Or you're nauseous. You're having you're side effects. Right. Or you're not getting better. Or you're still depressed. And then right. go. I'll try another drug. I'll try another dose. Trial and error. So you you shortcut all that. Exactly. So not for every medication, but our genes tell us how we all uniquely process many medications. And if I have your DNA results, right. just a couple of those genes before the prescription's given, I can tell your doctor, don't guess what the best drug and what dose to start Tim on. I'll tell you based on his unique body makeup what the right drug and dose wow. is for him. It's really optimizing. It's the ultimate in personalization. So that's around medications. And what we just launched last month, which has created a whole lot of really exciting media, is a personalized diet report. What Similar. I should eat. Exactly. In order to do what? I can so, say, my goal is this. So therefore, based on your DNA, you should go on this diet versus that diet. Don't get everyone tries diets. This diet, then that, again, it's like medications, trial and error. I'll try low carbs, and I'll try high protein, and I'll try the Atkins diet. It's just guesswork, and people get very despondent. So now, if I again look at a couple of your DNA, based on all the research around the world, I will say, Tim, if you want to try and lose five kilos, and who doesn't want to try and lose five kilos? If you want to maximize your chances of success. This is the right diet for you, your body and how your body processes food. So you've got a, med a med medical uh, medicine report, you've got a diet report. Yes. How accurate have they proved to be? Have you tested, you know? Oh yeah, no, we've got thousands. I mean, we've done 20,000 in the medication wow. report. We've got, no, no, it's, 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 beyond, it's beyond question because it's oh. not our research, as I said. We're not, we're, all we're doing is taking all the research around the world and collating it and saying, this is the best diet for you based on all this research because these are your genes. It's, it's just it's unbelievable, you know. Now, there are other elements at play. I'm not saying it's only about genes, but it's a very important part in the puzzle. Are you reporting on the best diet, or am I going to my GP or my naturopath or my new dietitian and saying, oh, here's my DNA report, got it from my DNA, uh, you tell me what's my best diet, or are you actually also offering We're doing advice? both. We're doing both. I mean, oh. we think it's important to engage in the healthcare professionals. It's really important. So yep. we, the, actually, the report has a section that is really simple for the consumer, direct, and also has a section for the healthcare professional so that you can take to your dietitian, and it's unbelievable. I mean, I can't tell you, look, the other thing I reflect on with my DNA, which I haven't had in any of my businesses, and I'm talking about the medication offering, is that there are not many businesses where you can have such a profound impact on someone's life. Like, 
absolutely profound. And we are getting testimonials, unsolicited, coming in every week saying, I've been struggling with depression. Go back to that example for seven months. I've seen four doctors, two psychiatrists. I've tried nine different antidepressants. They're going up and down and I'm being so depressed. I can't even look after my kids. I got your report. It told me what's the best medication and I've, it's turned my life around. And that is unbelievable. I've never experienced that. What more does that. a business owner want from that? I know. I mean, and again, to keep my staff motivated. You can't do anything with those testimonials, can you? Uh, you can't put them on your website. I mean, you're in the medical. Yeah, no, you've got to be careful, free, especially yeah. the medical ones. So, but you can, there are ways you can do it, but not really. Yeah, yeah and okay. uh, but you can tell stories. There is some storytelling that can be done if you get, you know, the customer's consent. But it, you know, in some areas, it's tricky with medical things. It'll be easy with diet and that. But yep. it's so rewarding to have a business that does that kind of stuff. For I was going to ask you, Leo, what you love about it. You've already told us yeah. now. Um, can you think of the moment when? in deciding that my DNA was your next big thing, where you've gone, I, th I think we're onto something here. This is, this is it. Yeah, well, I, I, look, I th it, it is that. You know, it's, it's hearing those stories right. from people that are struggling, you know, and, and, and we're sort of having that moment for them. Yeah, and it, it, it becomes an aha moment because it's kind of like the doctors, and many doctors that are my age or certainly older, they've never learned any of this stuff. You know, this is our sort of education yeah. battle that we need to be doing. There's yeah. so much education to do out there, not only amongst consumers, but amongst healthcare professionals as well. Because I didn't learn anything about it, and I only finished medicine in, in the late 90s. So they have aha moments. You know, they've, when they see it, some, one of their patients is struggling, and then they get this report, and they go, oh my God, their genes explain why they've been struggling and why they haven't been able to mm. get them on. It's an aha moment, and it's just a great revelation. Uh, all online at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, although you can buy the no, in pharmacy, you can, you can buy the kit through the pharmacy. Yeah, five hundred pharmacists are participating. So, so let's talk marketing. By the way, this is talking to Dr. Lior Rochberger. Yes, Did I get it. Yes, my DNA dot life is the business, a business that I think many don't understand and don't think they need. But clearly, uh, this chat's revealing that's not the case. Um, let's talk about marketing because, mm. yeah, it must be tough. And you've got you've got to get consumers, yeah, the me's of the world uh, to buy it. You've got to get pharmacists to stop, stop it, it. Yep. and you've got to get health professionals, chiropractors, GPs, dietitians, psychiatrists, yep. the lot, to buy into it. To, so we're, we're to endorse it. To endorse it. And is that about them saying to the patient in front of them, go and get your, your DNA tested? Mainly, it's not the patient coming with the DNA. Well, what we're, seeing, we're seeing a... It's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I think in the in you know in the good old days it was all about the doctor just telling people this is what you have and the, yes doctor Go to Google doctor do doctor, exactly doctor Google. now the you know, times are changing the last decade people have access to the internet with yep. you know so much information and not just for this people you know patients are going into their doctors with ten printouts yeah and saying hey doctor what do you think about this why yeah. haven't you know about this do you know about this yeah so it's really upping the ante for especially GPs they hate, they hate it they hate it. <laughs> But that's the world we live in today. Correct. Correct. Um, so, you know, we are, we're investing heavily in educating healthcare okay, professionals. So let's talk about that because there are business owners listening who, we, I mean, every business has a, uh, a vast group of prospects who could buy from them with different needs, with different challenges, coming at the product or service from a different angle, right? And mm. you have three very distinct ones. So yeah. maybe if we could work through how you're approaching each of those. Why don't we start with the consumer? Mum, ma and pa, out on the street, how do you get them to go, hmm, I'm going to go and get my DNA tested? Yeah, so we're, we're just turning on those campaigns now. And we've been speaking, we've got, I've got some internal talent, and we're speaking to some external agencies as well, because there's oh. so many different ways, and there's been a lot of conflict even in that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've only got limited resources as well, so it's not like, and it's such a big conversation to be having with people. The, the consensus position has been, because we've been, we've been talking about maybe TV, maybe media, oh. PR, maybe radio, but what's looking quite interesting and we're seeing some really good traction is using digital and digital marketing and online and social media and working with influencers. You know, there are people on those forums, whether it be, you know, Instagram or Facebook or, totally. that, or, or blogging bloggers, or correct, YouTubers. in the health and wellness space, because that's the area, I mean, park the medication beside, but in the, in the diet and the exercise and nutrition, yeah. that's all about health and wellness. People yeah. are very interested in that. So... We are speaking with those sorts of influencers, getting them exposed to our product, letting them go through the, the journey with us, and 
we feel that that's showing some really good results. Uh, you've started the approaching social started, influences? Yeah, we have over are the last using, month. Are you using an agency or are you actually just identifying the top 10 and reaching out to we're them? We're doing some direct approaches and we're using an agency. I had Jules Lund on this show about a year ago. Oh, He's yeah. got Tribe, right? Which yes. Is a local social influencer agency. They're popping up everywhere, but yes. it is absolutely... 2017's marketing trend of the year, social influencer marketing. And I love it, you know, I'm, and I'm starting to see, you know, in the last six months, I've, I've had five big brands reach out to me uh, to say, hey, listen, would you talk about this or would you get involved? So clearly it's starting to take traction. And I love it. From your point of view, it's sort of a roll up the sleeves kind of strategy because you talked about TV and radio. That's the lazy option. Not necessarily wrong, but you go, you place a schedule, the ads run, yeah. you sit back and hopefully you get some some, some sales, right? Yeah. The, the the social influencer strategy is identifying those top 10 health and fitness YouTubers or the top 10 podcasters and saying, hey, listen, this is what we've got. What would you like? And here's what we'd like and developing those partnerships. Exactly. The I other thing it. that I like about the digital that allows us that maybe some of the other mediums it doesn't and without sort of breaking the your budget in one foul swoop is that you can do some testing oh, yeah. because I don't really know even in our diet conversation how do I dumb it down what's the message you know do we talk about the fat gene do we talk about your DNA is helping get on our diet so we've actually created about 10 or 15 different creatives with different words and different images and we're actually trying some oh, Facebook yeah, ads yeah. and some Google AdWord campaigns so paid but quite you know just dabbling our feet in the water here and there to see what resonates most and with what? the digital we can track it you know, we've got totally. all the tracking on board, so I know that you know from that one got a thousand impressions and converted to fifty sales. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a real numbers oh, person. Love that I love that. I can see what you know, I'm in deep in Google yeah. Analytics. Yeah. Deep Let, in Leo's it. on the spreadsheets, guys. Just leave him for a moment. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I love pivot tables. Yeah. Well, so um, interesting. We can talk about that forever. Uh, as, soon as, as a consumer, as someone who would buy a my DNA pack, um, hearing the words DNA, hearing all that tech talk is no probably good. Da- no, no good. No good. You I've just got need to, to re- focus on the end benefit. Yep. The, you know, the, the problem and the solution, you know. Ha- have you been at the gym for the last nine months and struggled to lose weight? Yeah. I mean, yeah. those sort of messages are well, the ones that seem to be resonating. Yeah, okay. So it is, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. It's interesting. It's really interesting how we're going It's exciting. I can see that. I can, often I say TV, radio, and here we are sitting in a radio station at the moment, but... Um, there can be a huge waste of money, but I can see also for you where you have you, you really got brand you got a brand awareness challenge, you've yeah, got a yes. an educational challenge that those that could potentially work. Okay, so t- consumers, you're working on it, big challenge. Um, then you've got uh, let's go pharmacies. So they yes. they're a main distribution point. At where, the moment, they are. What am I going to do? Walk into a, 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 a chemist and see a my DNA stand? Yes. A poster out the front, a stand there, and I'm, I'm not going into the chemist to get. Well, this is a challenge, right? I, I'm not going in there to go. Oh, gee, I think I'll just dr- stop by a chemist warehouse and get a my DNA no. uh, kit. Correct. Not going to happen. No, it won't. But that's why it, it, you know we can't do any of these campaigns in isolation. No, They're no. so complementary to each other, and you what's know, the, we, what's the kit look like? Oh, it's a look. At, oh, I should have bought one in for you. Yeah. I left one in the car, but it's a little, <clears> it's like a mini VCR. It's a tiny little kit. It's a it's a mouth swab. Right. So a tiny little, you know, you twirl around the inside of your cheek, 20 seconds, send it off. Send it off. Reply paid envelope, goes yeah, to our lab. The diet one's $99, the diet report. Medication? Also $99. Perfect. Everything's $99, How yeah. do you just, I love pricing. Pricing. Oh, well, I... <laughs> How did you get there? Well, we, we've done, we're doing some testing again, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I like, yeah. you know, we've tried, we had, we had a much more detailed medication report where it looked at 300 different medications and we had that price at $109 and we thought... Well, people don't need all that information. Yeah, people are very, you know, narrow in what they want. You know, if they if they want information on just their mental health medications, well, they don't need the others. So we we've created sort of mini versions of the kit at a sub hundred dollar price point, and we feel that's what's getting the most well, you traction. You need take up too. You need volume. I need right volume. Now, the whole you? model predicated on volumes sure. getting on our portal. So it's um, we've tried one ninety nine, one forty nine, ninety nine, and we're thinking of having a dabble at forty nine. Right. For a different type of offering. Okay. Yeah, because obviously we can, some people might want the hamburger with a lot, some yeah. people might want the junior burger. Yeah. It's a bad, you know, Others want a Huxter burger, which is my favorite. Like Huxter. Burger. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, Past to the show. So um, it's interesting. Okay, so. Um, On the consumer thing, just to go back yeah. for one second, the other thing we've realized is that I don't have the budget to tack to get that campaign out broadly. So what we are doing is we're looking at corporate alliances, you know, strategic partnerships 
with organizations that have large membership bases already that, are, that their membership base is interested in health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So there's some big, for instance, corporate gymnasiums. Yeah. There's big insurance companies no, that already have a lot of corporate members yeah. that are interested in wellness. And I haven't done all these deals yet, but I've, I've strategically identified a few and this is new and novel for them. So it's a real win-win relationship. And that's yeah. how I'm gonna get the word out. I'm gonna leverage their database. Partnerships, partnerships, It's all about that. I can't do it myself, it's too hard. Past you know, guest uh, recently, Dale Beaumont, where he went through the seven step process of setting up highly profitable strategic partnerships and such an effective way of doing things. Because you know, these are people that have the eyes and ears of your uh, target audience and likewise, and you know, you can both give each other something you need. And, yes you get that massive, massive leverage. So that seems to be a no-brainer. And therefore, then you go back to your consumer advertising, and I wonder whether you become incredibly strategic and make sure that the, the ads you run or the outdoor posters you run are actually hitting the people, the marketing managers of the insurance companies. And well, you get it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yes. I remember I used to work <laughs> years ago at an advertising agency, uh, and one of my clients was Yellow Pages. Oh, and yeah. Uh, one of the bosses at Yellow Pages questioned the power of outdoors. So we strategically put posters near his home and near the entrance of where he parked his car during the day. Oh, so he's going, geez, I'm seeing these posters all the time. You it's must be bigger than you are. I love that. <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's good guerrilla marketing, isn't totally, it? Totally. <laughs> I, love so, it. I love sometimes it. Sometimes mass advertising, you're just trying to target three people, right? Yeah. yeah uh, okay, so I love that. So how do, you get, how do you get chemists on board? So they, look... It's an interesting battle, the chemist landscape in the country at the moment, yeah, because yeah. what they like about the medication offering is there's a bit of a consultation there as well. So when when you, you get your medication report, we it's actually required, you have to go back to a healthcare professional like a pharmacist who will talk to you about what the report means and what's the best medication and whether the doctor should or shouldn't change your prescription. So they're really wanting to offer more services and not just be box movers. So professional services in pharmacy, you know, they're a trusted part of the mm -hmm. community. So they are interested in these new services, very interested in it. Okay. We've built uh, an online accreditation and training system. So to be able to get offer the service, you need to jump online. It only takes an hour or so and go through the trainings. We want people to having obviously educated discussions with their customers about this area of genetics. So we've had 500 now join. 500 and now stocking it. Surely not individually. You've gone to a couple of major franchises. Yeah, we've gone for, or... um, yeah, we've, we, we, yes, we have. We've got Kemart and the Malu around the country, that is, yeah. yeah. So, groups, some of them have 10 or 20, some have 50. Um, and, you know, we, we're going for some the really big corporates now who are yeah. interested in it too. So, we don't see this is going to be long in every, every community pharmacy in Australia, but there are some that are interested in the services. And again, if our interests are aligned, which they are, mm -hmm. we've got a good professional service, they're interested in delivering a professional service. And what's been really interesting with pharmacy that they've commented on, sort of the early 200 that we got on board, is that obviously they make a small margin, but it's not even about that. They like that they're having that next level of relationship with their customers, that they can be putting an intervention yeah, in yeah. that's changing their lives, yeah? And then it creates that loyalty and that stronger relationship between their customers and the, and the local pharmacy. And that's really important to them, more important to them than just a single transaction. What's really interesting about this, Lior, is that you're a business owner who is very much at the start of their marketing journey. Mm. What, what, how do you feel about the whole marketing thing? Is it, do, do you love it? Does it create oh, massive anxiety? It's a bit, of, you know, I'm a bit anxious about it. Yeah. I think because I'm not, I'm not a specialty in that area. Like awesome. I don't have Mate, much marketing. Spirit. If you're a spreadsheets guy, you're not a marketing <laughs> no, guy. No, right? I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not that creative. That part of my brain's not as strong as the other yeah. half. Right? So what do you do about that? You got someone who? What, what about the bloke who jumped ship and came and joined you? Yes. Is he, is he the guy, or have you got? Yeah. Well, no. He, he's more an operational guy. So we. But we've employed people now. We've got quite a big team now, mind you. We've got. We're approaching forty staff. Wow. Forty full time staff. We're having a really big crack. So. You know, six or seven of them have sales and marketing backgrounds, and we're using some external consultants, and you know, we've got some people on a board who have strong marketing background. But why I find it a bit stressful is, given I just don't know it innately, it's not native to me. So, you know, I'm hearing things from some of my own employees and some trusted consultants and some trusted board members and some external agencies, wow. and they're all a bit, conf they're not all, but yeah, yeah, sometimes different. they're conflicting. Some says, look, if you've got that budget you should go for long form radio. And some say, no, try and just do it all through PR. And, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to navigate, mm -hmm. you know, what is the right path? And I know, look, I'm, I'm all for 
having a crack and I don't expect to nail everything the first time. And in this business where we are trailblazing, we're just going to have to be agile and pivot quite often mm -hmm. until we find the right recipe of success. But some of these bigger marketing spend budgets, I get nervous because I know no I can't make the mistake too often. No doubt. What, what about just standing back from all that and saying, don't come to me, leave that to... I mean, you've got Rudd Ali on yes, your board, right? I do. Exclusive, exclusive yeah. of this show. Yes. Uh, I think he'd know a, bit, a thing or two about creativity. He does. This is what we're talking about. I yes. Mean, the two is. parts of marketing you've got mark, message and medium. Medium, whether it be a podcast or a TV ad or a billboard or a point of sale, it's like you got that. It's then like, what are you going to say within that medium? Is He'd be pretty good, I reckon. Yeah, he's been. You could, you could do worse. No, he's been <laughs> phenomenal. And we obviously, you know, we're so wrapped that he's joined the team. And, and obviously, he's not active, but he's. There all the time. We counselling all the time. We're having informal catch ups. But you know, even some of them. What's interesting, and it's all good. There's no problem. But even some of the consultants that he recommended to us, oh, you've got to go and speak to them. Have said things slightly different from what he's advocating. Right. So it's, it's well, you know, that's, that's the thing about marketing. I mean, it's it is so subjective. And I shouldn't say being a spreadsheets guy, you're not a marketer. That's not true at all. I mean, you are. You have the ability to test, and many don't test. Many true. just go down that track. Oh, it didn't work, so they stopped doing it. Yeah. Whereas maybe a swap, slight tweak in a headline or a slight tweak in the visual or the time of day that the ad ran or whatever is going to be a complete game changer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and um, what Rad has mentioned on the testing, I do like the, the whole principle that he says, just pick a smaller market segment in a smaller geographical area and test that concept, that medium, that message. If it works, then you can you know get the confidence to invest more broadly in it. Yep. So we are, we're going to take smaller steps. We're not really in a massive rush mm -hmm. and, and do a bit of sort of that split testing and find the right recipe. Do you have competitors? In the United States we do and we're not there yet but we've now got, we've now set up operations in two other countries. Where? Canada and Hong Kong. Of course you have. So um, I was in China last week yeah. for 23 hours <laughs> on the ground. My first trip to, Canada, to China. <laughs> In uh, Guangzhou, what, what, um, Canada and Hong Kong. It was more opportunistic. In fact, oh. we weren't really ready um, for the overseas. We well, sort of we we knew it was coming, and we absolutely want to get there. But we see this as an international. But they came to us. They had heard about us. They saw what we were doing. You know, Hong Kong and also mainland China, where we've got we have a partner there that we're we're about to get into bed with commercially, and they love the credibility and the Australian credibility of what we're doing, and. That's what they've come up, and we've also got a, a few people on the hook in the UK as well. So you know, we we have. Is this a? I, I, I hear alarm bells. You haven't nailed Australia yet. Yep. Right. True. Ten thousand customers. Am I right in saying that? Right twenty. Now? We're at twenty thousand customers. Twenty thousand customers right now. Yes. Uh, it's not much in the scheme of things. What being opportunistic and going to these other countries? Yeah, I don't know. It's clearly a smart idea. What would I know? But it's like. Why wouldn't you just get Australia right? No, it's, you're right. It's also, it's also about focus. You know, you throw too many balls in the air and you, you totally. can't juggle that many. So, no, it is on my mind all the time. And uh, we have to find the right partners in those regions that have the local knowledge and the local know-how and some of the sales and marketing firepower, so to speak. And we can just leverage our intellectual property, which is the reporting and the genetic interpretation. Mm -hmm. So we are... We're not rushing, and there is a long gestation between where we first sort of identify a consultant or a partner in the country before we go live. So some of these things may not transpire for three, six, nine, or 12 months. Mm -hmm. So I suppose we're just planting some seeds at the moment, and we're not 100% sure, sure which ones will grow, but we do have to be conscious of spreading ourselves too thin. Well, it's really important. It's a great story, mate. It's uh, a good story. You, uh, are you, you going to be looking for the next thing at all in the next few no, years? No, this is it. This is it, is it? No, this is it. Well, I'm 43 now. I'm 43 <laughs> right. years old. And uh, no, look, I'm... But that's one thing I do do. You know, I, I, I don't... You know, we talked about spreading myself thinly in other countries, but I'm when it, the business is my focus, yeah. And I, you know, when I'm I'm all in, you know, this is at least a decade journey, yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm very excited by it. It feels to me like you, as a person, have finally arrived at something. You know, uh, urban intelligence, being a GP, these were little stepping stones that filled a need yeah. of some sort. But this one's actually filled a much deeper need where you are, you, you know, you're changing, you're saving lives, you're yeah, changing yeah. people's lives for the better and you've kind of arrived. I had a guest here last week uh, or two weeks ago who was a serial entrepreneur and he gets bored, right? He's literally jumping. He had eight years of failure. Right. He then he, he, he landed on something 
where within two years GoDaddy bought this business oh, from right, him right. because A, he was bored and B, you know, they'd made a good offer, but he's then on to the next thing and the next thing and horses for courses. Yeah. You know? Uh, but things happen, like, you know, even, you know, I, would, I agree, I didn't think I'd be spending that much time on urban intelligence, but if I think about it now, there's a reason for everything you don't realise at the time. So many of my investors uh-huh. who have put money into the Mind in A venture, and because I've got a lot of staff when using that money, yeah. are people I met through urban intelligence because they're high net worth people. I did their homes Love with it. luxury home automation. <laughs> so it's been like a full circle, yeah? And, and uh, oh. it's just fascinating. But this is, uh, you know, in terms of blending my technology, passion and my medical background and my entrepreneur this is perfect i mean it really is the ultimate yeah. intersection of those yeah. three for me yeah. yeah a bit more enthusiasm next time you come in Lior, I <laughs> uh, which i'd love to invite you back mate maybe in a year or two's time when you have got that marketing underway and you can tell us because i think i know my listeners will be interested to know what did work and yes. what didn't work and you know where where's the biggest bang for, with the least amount of spend coming from and all that stuff so, well, 12 months from now if i don't have those insights I'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> hey, buddy. Thanks so much, Leo. Thank you, Tim. Thanks my, for having me. MyDNA.life. Dot life. Thanks, Tim. Good stuff. Really good. Really good. I knew it would be. Is that right? It's totally. It's hard to know. Didn't yeah, even use those. Yeah. <laughs> um, fascinating. Yeah. It's really... Um, good. But we are. We are the beginning of our journey. You know, we... You know, you know really the beginning. So... We sure are. So, we raised... Um, I was going to ask we you, raised ten mil. You must have had forty stars. Yeah, we raised ten mil, and I'm, I'm, um, you know, I'm burning a bit. All private. Yeah, we're we're, a, we're a, yeah. <laughs> we incorporate a public company, but it's a it's an you know it's not listed. So it's private. Um, but my chairman is very aggressive. He um, we can't talk about that, but it's probably not suitable for there. But no. what I like, what I bought him on because we had a we were doing the fundraising. We had a few different offers, and it was a real it was a real important juncture for the business because have we gone with the others what I like about Dennis who's out who's my chairman who's quite active I mean he's not executive but he's very active is that he's made it two or three times already he's floated two businesses right so he's not interested in making this into a 40 million dollar business mm-hmm. with so his 10 percent stake not material for him now that's the yeah. cost of his garage yeah right, right? literally right? <laughs> literally. like literally so he he's very um but you know we've got to it is challenging because I've got to sort of um hold him at bay a bit too could you go, um, he just wants to go. I mean, he says this, this is going to be a billion dollar business, and it may well be, no, but well, we've got to get there, you know, Dennis. We've got to just make some small steps first. The nature of the I oh, should have talked about this, but um, it's it's a one off purchase, isn't it? And are you no, it won't be. Uh, I was going to say because the recurring, if you're updating, uh, hey, so I'm doing a diet report. Time, yeah. yeah, do you want to do the exercise report? Do you want your caffeine report? Do you want That's to be updated 10 bucks. when the tech, when the information yeah. becomes? And if you want all reports, just me to can, can constantly send you. Pay thirty bucks a year as a subscription yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Oh, we haven't. That's where it's at. So it's it's recurring revenue. There's thousands of conversations to have. Yeah, I mean it's that that data. It's all we're actually a database play. You know, we want to get yeah, a million yeah, yeah. people in our database in three years. Yep. That's our goal. A million people. Doable. I need China though. I need China. I need China. <laughs> hey, thanks, Leo. Good really here. good, man. Uh, now, I need to take you How down. often do you do, um, how often do you, <coughs> in the studio here, doing this? You just rent this room out. Uh, I'll explain that. Yeah. Andy, if you see Pete walk past, just Yeah, I'll him. grab him. Yeah, uh, no worries. Close to being ready. What's that called? That's Adobe Audition. Audition. It is, yeah. I don't so, need that. Oh, I, like so I love Photoshop. Oh, you do. I love Photoshop. Oh, Actually, with Pete, if, you, if he does come in, just tell him to come back. I just want to do a little bit of prep in my mind, and I need to push that. I need to stop uh, that. Uh, 